It has been a minute since I've talked about drone rules and regulations here on the channel. So today I'd like to answer a few common questions that I often see floating around in the comments of my videos, as well as some things that I read on the forums. Now, fair warning, this video today is gonna be mostly just my face on the screen. So feel free to accomplish something else while you listen to this. For instance, maybe it's a good time to finally put away that Christmas tree. So first, let's talk about drone registration in the United States and what could happen if you don't do it. All drones that weigh more than 250 grams are required by law to be registered with the FAA, the Federal Aviation Administration. And it's not just a regulation, as some people suggest. I see that all the time. It's actually a law. And if you get caught and the FAA is having a bad day, they can stick you with a fine of up to $27,000. Now, has that ever happened? Not to my knowledge, but just know that is the potential fine. So here's a scenario. Let's say someone, let's call him Luca, gets a brand new Skydio 2 Plus, and he decides that he's gonna have it track his bicycle as him and his friends drive down a crowded downtown street. And this drone is really good at tracking as well as avoiding obstacles. But then for some reason, the drone decides to take a turn into a bus station. And as good as it is at avoiding things, it happens to collide into someone, sending them to the ER with severe lacerations. The husband of that victim picks up the drone and he calls the FAA. The FAA takes the drone and they find no registration number. So they simply give Skydio a phone call and within a matter of minutes, using the serial number of the drone, they found out who owns that drone. A week later, Luca gets a letter from the FAA. Not only does he need to be ready to pay legal fees for the injuries that that drone caused, but he also needs to worry about that $27,000 fine. And I think that may be an instance where they would actually enforce the fine. Now, don't you think paying that $5 registration fee would have been a better decision? Drone registration, you guys, is not a money grab. And it's also not a way to track you. Trust me, the FAA does not care about you. The purpose of drone registration is so that the FAA can aggregate drone ownership and usage in the US. And it's also an easier way to find the owner of a drone if it's ever lost or anything bad happens. Just know this, whether you register your drone or not, and you lose your drone or something bad happens, with today's drones, unless you build it yourself, the FAA can easily find out who owns it. With the serial number, with the flight data, with the memory card data, the bottom line is if you own a drone today, it's impossible to remain anonymous. So spend that $5. It's really cheap insurance. A related topic about drone registration. What if you registered as a recreational drone pilot when you first got your drone? You paid that $5 and you put your number on the outside of your drone. But then a year later, you decided that you wanna start earning some money with that drone and you get your part 107 remote pilot certificate, do you need to then register as a commercial drone pilot? And the answer is yes. You would need to hop onto the FAA Drone Zone website and pay another $5 and get a new registration number for that drone. And as a commercial drone pilot, each of your drones needs to have their own registration number. As a recreational pilot, you have one number for all of your drones. Oh, and if you do have your part 107, just know that you can still fly recreationally. You just have to determine that before you launch your drone. And it's also a good idea to document that. Now, real briefly, talking about remote ID a little bit, a very common question I get and I see a lot of as well is, how do I enable or disable remote ID on my drone? Well, as of now, you don't. Although most drones now have the capability to transmit remote ID information, there's nothing to receive that data that's being sent out. Remote ID is still many, many months away from being finalized and active. So it's useless to have that feature toggled on. Just leave it disabled. Oh, and if you're not already, subscribe to the channel to stay updated on all things related to remote ID. Next, let's talk about a topic that's come up lately and I spoke about it earlier, like a few years ago, but uh, a question that I'm seeing often now is, can I fly my drone? over national parks. And it's a little bit confusing about what you legally can and can't do. 
And it's also a matter of what you should and shouldn't do. So can you fly from a national park in the United States? And no, you cannot. It's very clear cut. And you can find it easily on the National Park Service website. And also if you travel to any of the national parks, they have signs everywhere. Launching a drone from within the national park boundaries is prohibited. Now just know that this may not show up on the Before You Fly app, because flight restrictions only apply to the airspace above a property. It is not ground-based. It doesn't show any ground-based restrictions. So that means technically there are no laws prohibiting you from flying over a national park. Technically, you can fly over national parks as long as you launch and land from beyond the boundaries and you maintain visual line of sight. And I'll talk more about that here in just a minute. The Park Service, just like everybody else, does not regulate the airspace, the FAA does. The Park Service only regulates the ground below. Now the real question here is, should you fly your drone over a national park? And the answer is no. And I know some of the most beautiful places on earth to be viewed from above exist within our national parks. But the reason that they remain beautiful is because they have for the most part avoided the corruption of technology. Can you imagine if there were constant drones flying over our national parks? And I know some people don't care and they won't care and they'll say it's a stupid rule because they have that attitude of, well, it's just one drone. Nobody's even gonna notice if I just pop it up, snap a few photographs or capture a little bit of video. But I think the majority of people understand that this is something that would ruin the majesty of our national parks. Now, what if you do decide to fly from outside the boundaries, you launch and land legally from outside the boundaries, and you wanna get some footage above the park? Now, I don't know if you noticed, but most national parks have very large boundaries. For the most part, there's nothing really interesting to see until you get at least a couple of miles into the park. And this means that even if you decide to remain legal and launch from outside the park, that you really won't find anything interesting unless you fly well beyond visual line of sight. And yes, I know there are many of you that aren't concerned about that either. But in my opinion, drone rules are not a la carte. You either follow them or you don't. And I know I'm gonna get some comments about this saying that a lot of these drone rules are overreaching and they're unreasonable. That's not my argument, you guys. My argument isn't that the rules are too strict. My argument is if too many people are breaking the rules, that we're gonna get more rules and restrictions. So call me a Karen if you want to for saying follow the rules, but I'm looking into the future, you guys. I want this hobby to stick around. I want us to be able to fly freely for as long as possible and do as much as we can. And if there's too many rules being broken, then that's gonna bring attention, more attention to the hobby, and that's gonna bring them down harder on us. So that's why I'm such a stickler to advising you guys to stick to the rules as they exist. I hope that makes sense. Hey, and by the way, you should comment below, what other drone rules questions do you have? And if I get more, and if I get some good ones, I'll make more videos like this one. Because there's a lot of people, especially this time of year, getting a drone for the very first time, and I'm sure they have a lot of questions, just like I did when I first started. If I do make more videos like this, and if I use your question, I certainly will give you credit in that video. Now, if you wanna learn how to pass your Part 107 exam, that's one thing that I'm really gonna encourage this year, over 2022. It's a goal that I have. I wanna help people reach that goal. I wanna help people learn and study and pass their Part 107 Remote Pilot Certificate because I think it's really important and those people that have that Part 107 are gonna be able to do more in the future. So here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna start posting 60 second educational videos on my TikTok. I have a TikTok account, it's at 51 drones, and I'm gonna be posting regular short videos on there, teaching people how to pass their exam. And before you get triggered, like the old man sitting in the rocking chair on the porch about TikTok, do you know what the fastest growing demographic is on there right now? It's 38 to 55 year old demographic. Two years ago, yes, it was pretty much a kid's app or a young person's app, but it's changing and it's becoming mainstream. Look at Air Photography. He's another great drone YouTuber. He's about to hit 1 million followers on there and that's in less than a year's time. So I'm gonna be posting more educational and entertaining content on there. 
Trust me, you guys, give it a try. You will love it. And for those of you that are about to unsubscribe, because I use TikTok, it was nice having you here. I really appreciate your support. And if you wanna unsubscribe because I'm using a different app, then it's your prerogative. I, I don't understand it, but I respect your decision. I think the biggest issue is people just don't really understand TikTok. They see what's on the media and they see kids dancing and all kinds of stuff like that. But what I see on TikTok are drone videos, cooking videos, and how to build an off-grid bug out cabin. Those are the kind of things that I like. So those are the kinds of things that I see on my TikTok. Anyway, bottom line, if you wanna learn how to pass 107, follow me on there. Hit that thumbs up if I helped you out in any way today. Also, I'd love to have you join the community by clicking on that subscribe button as well. I wanna thank you for watching this entire video today. I really appreciate that. I hope you have a wonderful day. And as always, fly safe and fly smart. Okay, so what do you think? No B-roll throughout the video. It was just me on the screen talking the entire time. Was it just awful to watch that? Or was it okay? Do you not mind? Do you mind? Just let me know in the comments. I really appreciate it. See you guys.